I'm David Haig. I'm from the Naval Undersea Warfare Center, and the title of my talk is Adaptive Waveform Design for Active Remote Sensing. And I chose that title because while I do active sonar at the Naval Undersea Warfare Center, a lot, this is an air and space symposium. Most of you are interested in radar or LIDAR, and so remote sensing kind of covers all of those things. And the basic premise behind active remote sensing is that I transmit some signal, what we'll call the transmit waveform, out into that whatever medium you're operating in. And that signal gets reflected back by other objects in that medium, and we get a received signal in the form of echoes. And based on the structure of those echoes, I can infer a great deal about the nature of that object. For example, the time delay between the transmission of that waveform to the reception of the echo determines my target range. The size of the object is determined by the strength of that echo. And if the target is moving relative to that transmitter or receiver system, I get a Doppler effect, and it's in the form of a shift in the frequency content of that echo. And so measuring that frequency content, you can infer target velocity. And there's many others that we're interested in. And while there's many components to active remote sensing systems, it turns out that the transmit waveform has a profound impact on your system's performance. And so the thing that I've been looking at the last few years is, is trying to figure out what's the right kind of transmit waveform to put out into that medium for a given scenario. I'm looking for a particular type of target, I'm in some kind of environment, I have various sources of interference. What is the right thing to transmit at that particular moment? I want the vast majority of that waveform's energy to occupy the band of frequencies that I'm using and very little energy elsewhere. And that's becoming increasingly important as we operate in congested environments. And the FCC limits the amount of energy you transmit aside of your band. And so the, that needs to be built into this waveform design model, whatever, that, whatever model you propose. Right, so I'm proposing to do it using a technique known as multi-tone sinusoidal frequency modulation. Right, so the basic premise is if you look in this left plot, this upper left panel, that is the, the, the way I'm sweeping through that band of frequencies. And that modulation function is a weighted sum of sinusoids. Right, and I, can, I can adjust those weights to generate different types of modulation functions, and that's how I adapt the transmit waveform. Because I use a finite number of sinusoids, and this is a nice smooth modulation function, it has very high spectral efficiency, and that's what I'm showing that right plot there. Most of the energy is in the band I'm sweeping through. There's very little energy elsewhere. But I want to enhance that. I want to take these designs and adapt them and refine them even more. And that's what I focused on in the last year. All right, so here are just two examples of that. So in the left panel, I'm showing the autocorrelation function of two waveforms. One was an initialized waveform, and then uh, in the black curve, the one that I optimized. So what I'm trying to do here is reduce these side lobes of this autocorrelation function. This, this translates directly to the ability to detect a weak target in the presence of a much stronger one. So if I have two targets and I'm trying to resolve them, but the side lobes from the strong target are too high, I'll mask that weak target. And so I want to reduce those side lobes over the region where I've denoted with those red dashed lines. And I'm just running an optimization routine to do that while also not distorting the rest of the autocorrelation function. And so you can see I reduced those side lobes substantially by a factor of about 300 in this particular case. Right, and then in the right panel, I'm showing a case where I extended that to the ambiguity function. So now, it's, now I'm optimizing the shape of a 3D function. This is a little harder. Those white dashed lines denote the region where I wish to reduce the volume of that ambiguity function. Right, so the top was the original, and the bottom is the optimized version. You can see that I, not only did I reduce that volume, but that main lobe, that, that stayed the same. I didn't widen it. I didn't degrade my target resolution while reducing that ambiguity volume. This is actually showing up in a paper that I did for IEEE Oceans uh, this fall in, uh, in Alaska. Right, so just to briefly go over what I'm doing, adaptive waveform design is an interesting problem. It's very challenging, and I'm approaching that problem using multi-tone sinusoidal frequency modulation. And this allows me to finely tune my waveform to suit a particular design metric, and it also naturally possesses those uh, necessary properties for transmission on practical devices. 